Welcome back everyone to the Back 40 Firewood channel. Uh, so today I'm back here in the wood yard and I just wanted to go over a few things. Um, I get asked quite a bit um, either in comments or emails um, about the size that I split my firewood. I like to split things smaller. So my splits I generally try to keep consistently on the smaller side just because it works better for bundles and the roadside stand and it helps them season a little faster. Now, I'll run into um, occasions where, you know, I wanna just hammer out the rounds through the wolf ridge here. And I don't wanna be adjusting my wedge, you know, for every piece of wood that comes through. So what I like to do is I like to set my four-way wedge, which I'm using for this demonstration. I'll set that at a certain height so I know that each piece of wood I push through, the bottom pieces will be the same, fairly the same size. Now the top pieces, that's where, you know, they just get split in half. So what I've done, um, I kind of started doing this a while back and it took me a while to get used to, but I'll show you in a bit. Uh, if you offset your round, you can end up with, you know, a nice uh, consistent split for three of them. And then your one other piece that remains will be a little bit bigger, but you can send that through and kind of, like I said, maintain your consistency in your sizes. Um, this also works with just a single wedge. Um, if you sometimes, you know, instead of splitting around in half, you try to split it in thirds and then split those thirds in half, you might end up with um, a little more consistency in your sizes, if that's what you're looking for and if that matters to you. A lot of times I'll see people with either a single or a four-way wedge and they'll, you know, they'll especially with the vertical split, they'll have pieces that um, they're always centered on that vertical wedge. And then you end up with, you know, sometimes if let's say you're using a single wedge and you split around in half, and then you take those halves and split them again, the fourths end up being almost too small and the halves are almost too big. So if you offset um, the round to begin with, split one, shave one side off what you're left with then split in half becomes you know the pieces that you the size you want but anyway i'll just show you quick here i got four rounds ready so here you go all right so what i'm talking about here is like these two pieces if i split these right down the center with the four way they're going to probably give me four pieces that are the perfect size for what i want these two pieces however they if i split them down the center horizontally and vertically, those splits might be a little bit bigger than what I want. So what you can do is, and I'll show you here in a second, but you can actually line up your piece of wood off center. And by lining it up a little off center, you'll end up with one piece up here in the corner that's a little bigger. And then you just split that in half again, and you'll end up with actually five pieces that are more the size you might want. Now, like I said, this is this is the size that works for me. Your size might be a little different, but if you take like bigger rounds like that, you can do the same thing where you can split off center for your first time through, take the one corner and then hit that again. It will give you a nice size split. So I'm gonna run these two with the four way regular. I'm gonna do the same with that one. And then this one I'm gonna offset and you'll see, you'll see the results.
So now I'm gonna I'm gonna split this one now and you can see how it's off center. So it's gonna leave me with one split up in that corner that's bigger than the other three and then I'll hit that one again and I'll get all of them to be pretty close to the same size. Okay, so here we have that first piece that we split centered down the, you know, down the center vertically and horizontally. We got four pieces out of it. You can see that the two from the bottom side of the wedge, they're about the same size, but then these two are a little bit bigger. So you don't have quite this consistent size with four, those four pieces. Now when we split that off center piece, you can see we do have one that's a little bit bigger than the other. We have a a smaller one and these are about the same consistent size as the first two that we pushed through and then that one's a little bit bigger but those were the pieces from the first two pieces that I split with the four-way and if I put those up on top of here let me just stack these up so there are the the first two pieces that we split that were a little bit smaller in diameter you can see those splits up there and then that bigger diameter piece that we split off center you can see on the bottom by splitting that one by splitting it off center and getting those four pieces that are kind of about the same they match pretty well with that with the consistency and the size of the first two so and i mean those pieces they're not bad you know they're just a little bit bigger but you can see here the, your mix is more consistent in your splits so not that this is a huge deal or anything to really be that overly concerned with, but sometimes though when you're splitting, if you have that smaller diameter wood and you just keep everything centered, um, you might end up with, you know, a good bit of wood that's a little bit bigger than we want. So the solution for that, you know, if you, if you see that size diameter that's a little bit bigger and you've got your four way or even your single, like you can offset that first split don't have it centered up, offset it, get one, get one pass through with the size you want, and then what's left, send through again, and you end up with one more piece. <laughs> so that's the other advantage. You take one round and you get five pieces out of it instead of four. But like I said, just something to think about, because like for me, it, it took a while for me to grasp that concept, because every time I'd put a round up there, I would just center it up, you know, center it up with the wedge, with the four-way, push it through. Well, then I'd end up with you know, two splits that were a little bit bigger than the bottom two. And, and I was finding that, you know, when I went to make bundles, I'd end up with some, you know, I'd just grab a, a bunch off the, off the stack and they'd end up being like bigger than I wanted because that's just the way they got stacked. And so when thinking about it more and more, then I just kind of started paying more attention to, you know, the, that diameter, once you get past a certain diameter, these gnats are bother, bothering me. But once you get past that diameter where you know an even vertical and horizontal split is going to give you pieces that are a little bit bigger than you want you off center it send it through and then you take that one side that's a little bit bigger now you split that again because sometimes the more splits you get out of a piece the better speaking of which now i'm going to put on the six-way wedge and hammer through the rest of these rounds on the ground <laughs> so even with the six-way sometimes i'll offset my round on the wedge just because then that way i'll get a little bigger split off one side of it and i'll send those through again to get it down to the size i want
there it is. Like I said, I just wanted to give a little demo today. Um, you know, um, as I said earlier, it did take me, you know, I, I was always in that mentality of you lay the block up there on the, on the ram and as it's going through that wedge, uh, you center it up. But sometimes if you, you know, like I said, if I have my four way set and I'm not gonna move it, I just wanna send the rounds through. Um, Cause that way I keep my bottom splits consistent. If the diameter of the round starts going up, I'll offset it on that center split. And then I'll end up with one corner or the one side top a little bit bigger. I can send that through again, no problem. I mean, leaving the four way uh, at that set height, when you do send another piece through, it does shave off a little bit from the top, you know? So you do end up with, you know, stuff like that right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, just something a little different, nothing that's, you know, just something to think about. Um, when you do have that one, you know, your diameter of wood, you don't have to always split dead center. Off, offset it a little bit and you get one nice size and then the remaining piece you send through again and you end up with, you know, like if you see on this wood pile over here. So if you look at this stack of wood here that I just split, and stacked up you can see um, the split sizes they're all pretty consistent by offsetting my first initial pass through the wedge um, from being off center i was able to control my split size a little bit better so like i said that's what i was going for uh, splitting today um, it's just something to keep in mind if you're splitting and you're trying to keep your split sizes consistent but your rounds are not you know just kind of eye it up and, and start looking at that, that first pass through. I mean, instead of being dead center, maybe move off to the side a little bit. And that way you can break your round down into a consistent size splits when you're all finished up. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Stay safe, have fun, and be cool.